Welcome to a, another round in the channel member invitational and we are at the quarter final round now so uh, big games coming up and there's actually a feast of games today as I mentioned in the chat uh, before going live here there's going to be three quarter finals today so we have scheduled um, obviously Korra versus Moon Knight now uh, at 15 the, no, sorry, at 17 GMT, we have Relic against Madara. And at 20 GMT, we have Nike versus Sam. So before we jump into the games, let me just show you guys what's going on with this and the bracket. So we started off with 16 players. Uh, as I say, invitational. So majority are channel members. If you would like to be a channel member, there is a link in the description about that. Um... You get uh, basically links to um, secret videos, which are, are private, uh, ranging from um, explanation of build orders, reviewing of replays, um, some secret pointers uh, in my own gameplay, and access to a secret Discord group, and basically just support in whatever you want to improve, whether that's 1v1, team, or as I say, asking questions. And uh, yeah, we have a nice little group going. I like it. And um, as I say, not everybody from the channel membership wanted to take part in this, but a good majority did. And, and this is uh, where we're at at the moment. So Cora in the first round did uh, come through 4-1 against Millard. Millard actually started very well in that. And I feel like Cora grew into the set. Um, he got better as the games went on. And he is very new to this um, any type of tournament 
challenge um competitive scene really so he as he, as he said in the chat he's from south korea um i think it's great experience for him to actually sort of take part in this and i saw the improvement before my eyes so uh well done Cora in that first round unlucky millard um as i say you started well but sort of faded off in some of the latter games and he is now going up against uh, moon knight who i have to say look very impressive in the first round against anthrax um yeah in the past we've <laughs> we've made quite a bit of fun of moon knight but lately i think he's uh quietly got better so um yeah that will be interesting Later today, as I said, scheduled, we've got Madara against Relic, who had a pretty, um, how to say, convincing win against Hesso there. And Relic, likewise, same against General Sahil. So I'm expecting a very good set there. Uh, then Nike and Sam. So Sam and Tease um, were definitely good games, competitive games. Um, Sam's GLA, I thought, looked particularly standout. He's going up against Nike. Nike and Mamo was a great set. And I think Mamo was probably favourite to win that before um, we went into the set. But Nike rolled back the years a bit and uh, had a pretty good role on Tournament Desert. I think he won like three or four games in the end. Probably three games, sorry, would make sense on uh, on Tournament Desert to, to get him into that final. Yeah, because he picked Tournament Desert, won both of those. And the decider was on Tournament Desert, which I'll show you guys in a minute. But yeah, that was uh, Nike's route to the quarterfinal. Antipro and Apex. Now, Apex hasn't had a PC for like two weeks, and we've been stalling and stalling and stalling. And fingers crossed they play to... No, Friday, sorry. Um, I will cast that, and Jazzo is actually already confirmed that he will be on standby to play the winner. So at the, wor the very minimum, we put Antipro through to the next round, and we will do Jazza and Antipro Friday. But with a bit of luck, uh, especially as we've hung around... Apex and Anti will actually play as well, which I expect to be a good set. But I think with Apex not playing, I think you've got to say Anti Pro's favourite there. That is the map pool. So a nice little mix of um, familiar maps and some bigger maps. We are still only at a best of seven at this stage. And the decider in the quarterfinal is going to be a USA Mirror. That was the decider of the first round, Nuke Mirror PD. And of course... Um, Whoever gets through to the quarterfinal will have a bit of guaranteed prize money. So that is where we are at. Let's uh, find the players. I believe the players are actually ready. So let me hop on in. And maybe I've not turned my own admin on. No, I haven't. That would uh, that would help, wouldn't it? And there is Moon Knight. Hello. So let's jump on in here. Potentially do a little lag test. Might be a good idea. Thank you. Um, thank you, Lart, for the congratulations. Yeah, really happy with that. Hello, Dark Nine. Hello, Mohammed. Hello, Belal Ahmed as well. Hello, Milad Nine in the chat. Yes. <laughs> Sam says facey for co-cast. Right, let me see where the players are. See if they want to do... Well, there's actually not too much we can do with regard to uh, a lag test anyway. I think I'm probably the ideal host here. The only option would be a potential Reeb K cast, but yeah. Uh, who's on top of the bracket? Korra's on top of the bracket. So he will pick the first map. I think, uh, here we go. Come on top of bracket. So picks first map. Oh, Mr. Moon Knight. Can you change to your full lick to confuse viewers? <laughs> I 
Uh, dear. Sam says, do I need a co-caster? He has 30 minutes. Well, in terms of observing with, with Korra from South Korea, um, I'm going to say no to that, actually, just on the latency. And I've had the game open, and I don't want my game to freeze when I share my app through Discord. So I'm going to say on this time, Sam, um, I'm going to decline. Sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, happy if, you, uh, if you've got time on a future one. You can even literally observe. I mean, if you're around for Apex versus Anti, if that goes ahead, we're all close locales, so we can literally all be in the game and uh, it will be 10 latency. So, yeah. But for, for those coming up, no worries. But I'm going to say for this one, I'll, uh, I'll roll solo. That's okay. Oh, Cora can't see the room. Cora, yeah. Oh, that's a problem. Okay. We might be having some slow load potential here. I also don't see him in the Radmin. Ah. Could be some slow loading going on here. Dark9 expects a close set. Yeah. Cora. Hi, Bird. So I'll say uh, Cora, draw map first. Sure, I. Sure, let's restart Radmin and game. That's probably not a bad idea. All right. So let me. Wraith wants me to boot things up again. Which I'm happy to do. Heso wants Wraith to name change to Rat. <laughs> um, hello, Al Sham. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Alright, well, I'm all read up here. This is why you start early. Start early. To, uh... <laughs> to sort these issues out. Um, oh, hello, baby John. Big love from Myanmar. Wow. Hello, hello. Yeah. I know, South Korea, and uh, even better, Cora, I think at, at one point wants to start YouTube himself in terms of streaming, which would be amazing to uh, to build the Asian community. He's like a mini vivid, look. Mini vivid. Mini vivid picking Arctic Lagoon. Excellent. So yeah, that would be That would be amazing to build the scene up there. And of course, Vivid, that's a very nice matchup to start things off, by the way. Yeah, um, and it'd be amazing if Vivid starts streaming as well, won't it? So, uh, he can be a real inspiration to that region. It is rising a bit. I actually think that's okay, you know. Me and Wraith are from the UK. That is kind of the speed. Okay, it's going up a bit. <laughs> it's going up a bit. But South Korea is that little bit further than Malaysia, isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't think it might be. I don't think it will get too much better than that. Hello, Mamo. Hello, Sir Den as well. Cora's happy with that. It's rising a bit. Yeah. Right, well, let me try and host see if they see the room. Oh, perfect.
Millard 9 says... Millard 9 says he could have done a bit better against Cobb, but he didn't prepare and he played no games during the day. So very interesting. Well, this should be a 1-1 matchup. Um, let's introduce the players first of all. So from South Korea, in the blue, it is Cora. And he is with GLA Toxin on Arctic Lagoon. Down in the south from the UK, from Birmingham, in the red, it is Moon Knight with the red tank general. And yeah, I think played as optimal as possible. I think this is obviously a 1-1 matchup in terms of Tox being the favoured army. But I actually think on this map, you might see Tank do very well. It's quite an open map. It just takes one sneaky flamer to get in. And we're going to see here our first interaction. Is Korra going to rally some terrorists? He is. Very nice. And he should, I believe, have scouted that. So if you see that, you should uh, try and get rallied a terrorist by this supply. And he is doing that. Truck Rush is on the way. And actually a second Truck Rush from... Uh, from Wraith here. That is a very nice worker placement. Is that going to get through though? Yes, sit. No, not quite. Actually, a little misclick there. Is that now going to get through? Missed again, actually. And wow, Cora's actually dealt with the truck on the right. So if the tech harass is good here. And by the way, he's been watching. He's been watching my videos, Cora. Very nice. Um, yeah. Become a member if you want to know about that. Um, he's done very well in the opening here. So if the tech harass is good. The advantage is to Korra here. Does make me proud actually. How he got better from the very first game against Millard and through the set. And this is a, a really good reaction to what can be. Well, a game losing rush to <laughs> the trucks could literally wreck you. Uh, two RPGs are moving forward here, but they will be dealt with by the Gats. But he's, he's aggressive everywhere. These RPGs are guard mode in there. Mines are up in place for Moon Knight. There is a sneaky dozer there. And that tech is dealt with. But the, the <laughs> aggression continues. And I think he would be better off popping here, actually. He's uh, engaging this gap, but he will solo the gap. But there is actually a proxy war factory from Moon Knight at Analyze the Analyze the game same and give time. 1v1 tips 3 aha. Also request to remove Hesso from mod. <laughs> I, without even checking who that message was from, I am going to say that is 90% Mamo. But I'm going to read that after this game because we've got... Uh, Quite a big interaction here. Cora is pushing in. And one thing I think he should do in this situation is just gun down the trucks. He's actually focusing on the supply itself. But that is actually not delaying the mining at all. So he's done damage, but he's actually not done anything. And meanwhile, Wraith has got a very nice sneaky flamer down the right side. So all of this harassment is all well and good, but he could just lose to a Famer here. Tox Tunnel will deal with one of the uh, Flamers. Supply is going down here. And actually, this supply is camped as well. The tech did go down, though, but this Scorp is now Vet 2. So it is essentially one supply versus one supply. That Flamer suffered a bit in the lag there. And these quads will go down, but I think the Tox Tunnel will deal with that flamer. Yes, it does. And this Scorp is still alive. Yeah, despite this flamer... Ooh, that is a Vet 2 flamer. And that is a bit ambitious. I think that needs to be cancelled. He won't be able to hold that. But wow, he's actually getting the oils behind this. And he is going for a dozer. He is indeed going for a dozer. And that dozer is down. So the one dozer remains. Um, I don't think he needs to be making quads here. I know there's always the threat of a helix, but just Scorps are fine. And he did cancel that supply. 
Vet 3, ooh, Scorp goes down, and these quads are continuing to push in. But he's actually in such a good position, he just needs to uh, hold these flamers with Scorps, and he is making Scorps now. But he's just played so aggressive, that's funny. Gotta look at his base here, though. These flamers, yeah, he does react now. But I think he might lose... Yeah, he's going to lose both the builders here. And uh, maybe he's not aware of that. Maybe he just thought he dealt with the flamer and there wasn't any more coming. Okay, he does kill the flamer here. There's another flamer coming in. Needs to sell that supply, really. And Wraith is stabilizing. He's also getting his CC. And if that flamer goes down, the game might actually just be completely over. The score barely survives. And Korra is desperate for the Scorpion rocket right now. That would help him greatly. Yeah, it's still... Well, it's one supply against one oil at the moment. So these games are not boring. There's another flamer coming around the side. Yeah, and I just think he's probably not seen this before and he doesn't realize there's a war factory here that i think is what's killed Korra off guard he has seen this other flamer and he's got to be careful actually he doesn't get kicked here because if artillery comes across the map that could just kill the last arms dealer and well the artillery is coming but he has just dropped a supply and he's got a decent amount of units out he's actually killing the forward supply now but he is going to lose, pretty sure, his arms dealer here. Yeah. But, despite all that, Tox Tunnels are still very hard to clear. Poran has got himself a Vet 2 quad, though. Esso likes the aggression of Korra. As I say, it is literally mini vivid, isn't it? And I, I mean mini, mini vivid because Korra's still <laughs> inexperienced. But I do like how he was in three different places attacking. And he's done a sneaky worker there, which is always very nice. Has re-established his supply, but more sneaky flamers are coming in. And he must be wondering how they're getting here. Yeah, he's actually put a worker there because I think he thinks they're rallying around the map. He does not realise there is a proxy war factory here. And it's going to bite him again. Wraith not paying attention to that flamer. And he, but he is reacting now. Supply will most likely go down here. And one oil remains as well. Okay, it actually only went down to the hole, so that's quite quite big, actually, that that survives. But at the same time, Wraith is re-stabilizing. There is a sneaky tunnel on the right side. But I think not going Scorps here and not getting the Scorp rocket and potentially just being a little too aggressive may have cost Korra here. Obviously not identifying this... Uh, Proxy War Factory's hurt him as well, but the CC is going down, and he does have the Scorp Rocket now. Hello, Alfie Ace. Welcome. But yeah, Sneaky Flamers, and I did say that, Sneaky Flamers on this map can really catch you out. And he's having to sell his entire base here. Oh, and he's done a real panic click back to his base. And he's losing his Scorps in the process. I think that's just one Wraith game number one. Oh, there is a little bit of a spike there. Gap turret does go down. CC being remade and Korra does GG. Yeah, very nice uh, game number one, that. A lot of action going on. Absolute carnage back and forth. And Moon Knight does take the first game. But really, Korra was in a position to win that. So... Yeah, for him, needed to go Scorps that little bit earlier and didn't identify that war factory on the right side.
Now let's read Mamo's message out. Thank you for the donation, by the way, man. Analyze the games and give ta 1v1 tips. Yeah, aha. Also, request to remove Hesso from mod. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, true. And he dealt very... He dealt very well with the initial two trucks, but I really think that he didn't know about that war factory. So that was a nice move from Wraith in the end. And uh, Moon Knight does taste take a 1-0 lead. I am going to encourage players here with a nice first game. And we go into game number two. So now up in the north, continuing in the red, it is Moon Knight, aka Wraith, with the GLA Tox. And down in the south, it is Korra in the blue, with Tank General. Looks like we have some... Uh, Potential copying of the build order here. Yep. Lights the clear the mines as well. Very <clears throat> very nice indeed. Yeah. Uh, that supply for me is too far away. That should be ending about there. So that is one change I'd like to see. This supply is better. And terrorists are being rallied, so... Wraith looks pretty prepared for this. Yeah. Truck's gonna sneak by. Oh! Nicely done. Nicely picked off. Second truck will deny this worker. Nope, he's missed it. The third supply might even get dropped here. Yeah, and I think at this stage you just send the truck back to mining. Yeah, and that's what he's going to do. Flamer is out. Third supply on the way. TT is being prepared. Arabic guy asks about my gameplay data. Believe it or not, I don't even think it's in the top 10 when you look at Gen Tool data. Mines are in play here. Ooh. And the tech goes down, but what are those terrorists doing? Okay, they do get the war factory. And, yeah, Korra's suffering a little bit from um, panic clicking, I would say, here. So when he sees a unit, he sort of selects all. I would also like this flamer to go round the outside like we saw Wraith do. And Wraith, the difference is, the difference is here, um, Moon Knight is going for Scorps, which I think is a good call. Oh, Tech RPG though, got absolutely owned by the mines in the bottom left, so the harass could have been better, but that is a very, very nice sneaky tunnel there. Right, nice potential box from Moon Knight here as well. I think that will stop this gap doing any damage, yep. So probably should head up here. But there is an interesting transition going on, so that could be very, very nice. But the Scorp pressure is continuing. Outpost is moving on through. That won't do too much damage to the workers, or at least it'll take a bit of a while. Um, and he is going to end up just sacrificing that supply. Which, if he gets this up, he could actually still win the game. He uses the outpost to run over the workers. Well, if you're going to do that, I think you could have evacuated the tank hunters and just slowly start picking off the supply. And, uh, that you know, at least you would have that. Helix is about to be up. Oh, sneaky flavor. This needs to. This could be massive. He needs to get. Oh, he sh he's missed an opportunity there. He needed to start flaming that arms dealer instantly. Oh, massive opportunity missed. You flame that arms dealer. There is no anti-air. 
at all. Now Wraith knows he's got to add a few quads. I think that was a massive moment from Korra there. When he watches this back, he'll realise that combining an arms dealer kill with the helix would have been game ending. But he is still going to the base here and there are no quads out. There might be a few RPGs in the tunnel. We'll see. There are a few RPGs in the tunnel. But the pop basically is a pop of losing all your losing all your RPGs and Scorps and wow he unloads I was about to say if he doesn't unload this is going 1-1 one, one. I think Cole has done this he's, he's gapped camps the uh, the left side supply tank hunters are gunning down the arms dealer but didn't retarget on the quad there is a flamer here Ray's still holding for now it's actually very tense this. He's flaming his own tank onto a little bit. Needs to redirect that flamer. He is now. It is flamer lag coming in. Tank hunters need to be firing at the Scorps. They aren't redirecting. Holy lagus. <laughs> Wraith is laughing at that. And... Well, the supply goes down, but the arms leader somehow survives. He's also... <laughs> He's over here crushing workers with a dose. <laughs> I love it. I love how he attacks in loads of different places at once. It is a little bit, uh, at times, maybe not always the correct decision. Like, holding a specific area is sometimes better. But the multi-pronged harass is very, very nice indeed. And Wraith is struggling to cope with this. All of his supplies are... Uh, under pressure here and the second helix is on the way and I think Korra is going to level the score. There is one Scorp out which is going to get taken down here. Arms dealer has to be sold and Moon Knight GG's. There's a mismatch in there as well for good measure but that is one apiece. So nice games so far and I have to say Korra looks better than when I last saw him so that is amazing. Very very nice. Moon Knight going for Oil Rampage. That is one of the big maps in the pool. Um, I feel it's a really good test. A really good test for this level of player to practice their macro. And wow, it is a GLA mirror. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Demo Tox is the, the matchup. Well... What you need to be looking at here is a double racks opening with the oil grab. And good luck, have fun. It's a very polite guy. South Koreans are, the culture is very polite. I've been there several, several times and it, they are unbelievably polite. Oh, Cora didn't load on this one. Something happened there. Hello, last drop. Popper says his playstyle feels like freestyle to me. I mean, he's here to rush, so it's gonna, it's going to be interesting. How he uh, copes with Aura Rampage. I think this is a smart choice from Wraith. I might tell uh, Cora that they're calling him Little Vivid. He might have got a serious error there, Cora. Anyway, I don't want to influence or put the players off, but that is a very nice uh, compliment to be called Little Vivid. That is for sure. 
Although Vivid calls himself Little Giant, so what would be a little version of Little Giant? Miniature, miniature giant? Minuscule, tiny, little giant? <laughs> anyway, down in the left of bottom, uh, down in the left of our rampage in the blue, it is uh, Korra with the Tox. And in the top right, with the demolition in the red, it is Moon Knight. Matthew says, are there any of the top players on General's American? Well, your best American for some time and, of course, World Series winner is a guy called Boyko, isn't it? Um, but there are quite a few American players. We do see double barracks coming in from Cora here. Yes, you have Pepsi, you have Fire Lord, you have Tease from America, um, you have... Who else is from America? I'm actually forgetting now. Pro Killer! Loads, there are actually quite a few. Um, ooh, these Rebels are not being rallied out, so I think we're seeing Korra on the macro front here. Potentially struggle a little bit. Wraith, on the other hand, is getting those Rebels out, so... The way you have to play this map is very, very unique and different to pretty much every other map on Zero Hour. So you've got these seven oils, which you need to get ASAP as soon as possible with your double barracks. And your own tech needs to try and delay a few of these oil grabs. With Tox specifically, I think taking a Tox Rebel RPGs and a worker in that bunker is a very good strategy. But uh, Korra is distracted on denying workers here. But I think Wraith has got the better approach so far. And he's going to be going straight for oil denies. And to be honest with you, I generally don't know how many times um, Korra's played this map. I would say not often. I think whenever he sent me in like replays to review, they've generally been on pretty small maps like Tournament Desert. Maybe Snowy Drought. But he is denying a worker here. He is actually getting his oils as well. So, although the start was very good from Wraith, he does. <laughs> he, he's got potential, hasn't he, Cora? You, these little moments running around like that. It is, it is mini vivid, isn't it? Just in, in real fleeting glimpse. In a real fleeting glimpse. Climax said, I saw a nice. Replay of you yesterday, Marikar casted by Domi Jile Mira versus Excal. Yeah, I think that was from a challenge or something. Um, I think big size is from Denmark. Giant dwarf. <laughs> Tiny giant. Uh. Oh yeah, Percocet American. Forgot that. Of course. How can we forget Sexy Mexi? Alright, so the game's stabilising a little bit. Let's do an oil count. One, two, three, five oils for Korra. He's getting a sixth. Needs to get this one. And we have one, two, three, four, five. It's five oils apiece. It's going to be seven for Moon Knight coming up. Yeah, Pepsi is um, in the chat, and I'm <laughs> I actually laugh when I watched the World Series final um, cast of Domi back, and he was shouting out the sponsors. He called Pepsi Philadelphia, which is a um, like a sour cream sauce here, like a butter type thing. Nice uh, tech micro, and so I'm afraid when memes are born, you got to continue them. So I'm gonna call. Uh, Pepsi Philadelphia now, as well. Very good, Arva. Lift truck is from Lithu Lithuania. Underrated comment, that. Very nice. I do like that. Okay, so both players have all oils, all refineries. Uh, neither player has taken the third supply yet. Moon Knight is on the way. And Korra is up to three arms dealer. And the palace is actually earlier than... 
great. So from here, I would like to see an early black market, get those upgrades pumping, and then you're going to start to see Scud Storms getting dropped. But I think with this amount of arms dealers, Korra could look to do a little bit of pressure, and that's exactly what he wants to do. He does at least want to clear this tunnel, and then he might look to push down the left-hand side. nice to go back for now. Um, I think he wants to press his advantage. Black Market is being started. Scud is being started from Korra. Although, where is that worker? I think there's... Oh, here it is. I thought there'd been a misclick. Wraith's Palace has just finished. Instant Market from Wraith. Instant Scud Storm from Wraith as well. So I think uh, the players are doing well here. Bear in mind, you consider these players in 1v1 sort of mid, or at least we've seen more of Wraith, haven't we? So he's more on the mid semi range in 1v1. And Korra, I mean. I think when he when he first started playing, obviously, which hasn't been long, you, you've got to consider him newbie. But he's looking better and better here, and he's actually pushing down the left hand side. Maricar says Philadelphia is a state. Yeah, but it's all—it's also like a—it's like a cheesy. How to describe it? It's like a cheesy chivey spread that we put on, we have on bread and crackers here sometimes. Philadelphia. Right, buggies are out from Cora, and he's starting to push. But the main aim of the game here is to start gunning down a few oils. So. That's what he's going to be aiming for. Demo bikes are now out, and that's going to be a good hit. Yeah, wow. One bike for three Scorps and an RPG. I think Koro was a little bit late to push. He's got to be careful about these bikes. Ooh, that could have been a big hit. Buggies need to get behind the Scorps here. Scorps don't really work now against demo bikes. I think... Uh, Obviously, buggies with micro can deal with the demo bikes. Maybe you add a couple of quads yourself, but buggies alone ought to do it, really. He needs to get the buggy ammo here, and he needs to get the worker shoes. Seems to be a bit late on that, whereas Wraith does have the worker shoes. Yeah, so he's not getting those upgrades. So worker shoes needs to be a priority, then buggy ammo and we're not seeing either just yet scud storms are almost identical but the demo scuds are of course um stronger but the push continues more demo bites coming in this could be a big hit does block his own worker and buggy ammo is now live and the bike is targeted down so wraith under a little bit of pressure here he is using Looked like he was going to use that worker to detonate. More bikes going to do some big hits here. Needs to just simply X. Okay, that could have been a lot worse than it was. So yeah, X is going to scatter your units. And that is an absolute last resort when... Uh, when you're a demo bike driving close to your army. Worker Shoes is now up for Cora. This bike could be massive, though. Yeah. Three buggies does go down. But crucially, he's not picking off an oil here. So I think minimum, you need to just literally gun that oil down. He is focusing on the tunnels. XP is pretty similar. And there's the ambush. That is a reset of the buggies. Now, does Korra have the cash bounty? So he needs to be dropping the CC scaffold for the cash bounty. Ah, this could be very nice from Wraith. He may be using Demo Jarman to kill some oils here. And yes, he is. That is a smart move. Meanwhile, the bikes are continuing to clear the tunnels. And I think, I think Korra is on the cash bounty. No, maybe it's... Yeah, it has to be. We've got 50 for that. You just see here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he is, he is. I saw the 50 on the on the buggy. 
Right, this though could be absolutely massive. He is going to lose another oil. And he may be losing to this Jarman alone. Needs to get fortified structure. He's spamming a lot of markets here. He's actually adding another arms dealer. So Korra's going for more of a army push rather than a scud war here. He doesn't want it to go late against Demo. But he can't leave this Jarman to keep running around his base killing oils. So where is the radar van? There is one. He's adding quads now to deal with the... The bike. So a quad um, buggy composition could be tricky for the demo. But yeah, this, this demo Jarma is massive. Absolutely massive. Going to lose a fourth oil, I think, potentially here. Let's clear a tunnel. Yeah, the ticking is a problem. Radar van is now out. This is where you need radar van scan to deal with this. But yeah, the importance of this, I can't, um, I can't emphasize enough. Every single oil counts so much on this map. And I think that has probably just won Moon Knight the game here. That alone. The earlier scuds, the number of scuds. And that demo Jarman. And actually needs to send his radar van into this bottom right. Yeah. <clears throat> and a slight change Cora needs to make on this map. Um, on Aura Rampage, it's more about Scud Storms than Markets. Because you have limited build space. So when the scuds start hitting here, you get so much couch bounty. You don't actually really need that many markets. It's more about the scuds, which is what we see from Moon Knight. And a fifth oil is going down here. Incredible damage, that Jarman. And Exile says in the chat, he doesn't like two scuds next to each other. I agree with that. Oh, and he's trying to control fire. Yeah, that is so frustrating. The radar van is sniped. And the Jarman actually survives. Wow, I actually don't think uh, Wraith needed to do that. He detonated it for two... Um, for two buggies. But... Oh, he's put Rip here. Well, Cora needs to use his Scud as soon as possible. Because he's about to lose both... And looks like he's just... Yeah. Oh, that was a silly move from the Debo Ambush before he could detonate. Yeah, with the Debo Ambush, he could have got both, actually. He really failed on that, but Cora did not fire. And here he's showing just that li a little bit of inexperience, actually. Hello, Sunny Time. Good, thank you. How are you? But the demo Jarman for me and the amount of scuds has decided this game. Cora's style of continuing to push. If he wanted to go for that, he needed to push a little bit earlier. And he needed to start killing a few oils. And then behind that, you need to then just spam scud storms. So, and wow, that bike getting in there. Fortified structure when you know you're going to get hit from scuds is required as well from the palace. You need to research that. And yeah, at this point, all you can hope for as Koro is to try and get level 5. Try and anthrax the production. And then try and... Production camp your opponent. And that is basically your only option. Um, but Wraith is nicely bunkered in here. Moon Knight nicely bunkered in. Demo traps in play. Ow. 
and even a Tox Bomb is going to be delicious. He can control fire the uh, ground with a Scorp. And he GG's actually. Maybe he doesn't know about that. You need to tell him about that. that if you control fire the ground with a Tox Scorp, it uh, clears the Anthrax. Exile says Wraith Ambush. Yeah, 100% Wraith Ambush. Size would be proud of the float. Okay. So, let me update the scoreboard. It is 2 1 to Moon Knight. And we go into game number four. Could be a big moment in the set here. Down in the bottom left, it is Moon Knight in the red with the toxin. And in the top right, it is Korra with the demolition. So says Rat Ambush. <laughs> Rat, am <laughs> Rat Ambush, oh my word. Uh. Okay, so we're seeing a similar setup from both players. It is how they transition to the mid game, which is going to be the most important thing here. Korra would have to, if he wants, go against his instincts a little bit. And as demo, you can play this mega passive. Your demo scuds are so powerful. You, uh, you don't really have to move across the map. But it will be interesting how this pans out. I think initial build orders from both players looks pretty good. Wraith might be going for a bit of pressure on this tunnel, and that is one thing I think uh, Korra could improve on. I think you definitely need a tunnel like there. If you see my World Series final against size, I went for like here and around this sort of position. Um, we've not got the tech veterancy, and that might be a conscious choice. You might want to go scud launchers here. But yeah, Wraith is going to, again, I think just good choice. Because a Tox Tractor is going to be needed now. A little bit of Miss Micro on Moon Knight's tech. But this tunnel is going up. Horror tech coming across the map. He should deny a few oils here. My favourite general is Air Force, of course. Gotta love the Air Force. Two rebels get denied there. That is a win for Korra, for sure. And he is dead getting his own um, oil boom initiated. Needs a Tox Tractor. Dropping a palace pretty early. And we see a nice follow up from Moon Knight here. RPGs in the building. And I think that is just good, good, good strategy toys from Moon Knight. To abuse that position. Tox Tractor is out. Should must not chase the uh, tech though. He's got to get that Tox Tractor over there and deal with this. And make his own techs to chase this one down. Fortunately he does have a second tunnel there. So can deal with this. But this sort of thing here. You will see Marikar do time and time again. And Wraith trying to micro around that building and he's done well. Moon Knight has done well here. That's going to require a second Tox Tractor. And these small things win you games. They do. This is strategic decision making here. Okay, nice crush on the Rebel. So Korra... Has denied a few oils or delayed a few oils from his point of view. He still hasn't got. Has he got another Tox Tractor out? No, he's really struggling with this position.
but Wraith is lacking workers here. And from his point of view, his macro is failing a bit because he's making quads, which I don't think you should be doing. He's very late on the palace. And so he's doing what I call an in-betweener, <laughs> which is he's not being all out aggressive and he's not camping. So either drop down a few more arms dealers and go on the autobahn, put down in the outside lane, or pick off a couple of oils and get your palace. But it still might be enough because Horror has really struggled to deal with this position. Um, Essa says, isn't it better to do the tunnel further away so I don't lose it to tech RPGs? So the whole reason I had it there was to intercept the tech RPG and the, um, the position there. So it's not a problem if you intercept it before it gets there. That's the thought anyway. And then, um, if size was going to go for that, I was going to have my like second or third unit as a tox tractor. So I'm going to be popping clear in that before my tunnel goes down. That's why I'd place the tunnel like there. Cora has now tech though, so he can be getting up to demo bikes. He is dropping markets. He is getting a third supply. And Okay, here we see the palace... For Moon Knight, who is actually now capturing an oil. But what Korra could go for are the Scud launchers. Fox Tractor coming in. Oh, that is a big clearance. That is a big clearance. Moon Knight not paying attention there. Was distracted by something here. Is that a tech RPG or a TT? It might have been a tech RPG. So there's no way you can engage that in close quarters. You've got to attack that at range or with demo bites and oh my god it does look like he's going to engage it. He mustn't. He'd be better off going down here picking off an oil or two. I'd like to see the same Jarman attempt. He's going buggies. But he's going to be playing catch up. Wraith is going for quads. And I think that's because probably now he thinks demo bites are going to start hitting me. But yeah, I think initially he could have gone for scorps. But at this stage, yeah, may as well go for quads. But didn't spend the, um, the gen point. So would you go for scud launchers on this map? Could be a good choice. Anyway, the buggies are starting to chip away at this. And Wraith had quite a lot of money in the bag. That is a big army though. Buggy ammo's live. Korra actually pops to try and hold this, but needs to scatter the units a bit when a Scorp rocket fires like that. And I think Moon Knight here has done a very wise map choice, playing to his strength, doing the better strategy um, options in both games. You have been defeated. And he does take a 3-1 lead, but it is Korra's map now. And if you get Korra on a smaller map, we may see an equaliser in the score. It's going to depend on the armies. But we do now uh, have Moon Knight at match point. So he is one step away from the semi-final. Or oh, maybe taking a moment to... Uh... Maybe compose himself, have a think of the map. Goes for Vendetta. Yes, very different style. Unique compared 
to all maps. Yeah, he struggled with that, as we could see. But Wraith, aka Moon Knight, may struggle here. Because we've seen Korra's multitasking, harassment, aggressive style. And he needs a matchup he can win both ways. And this is one of them. So, let's see. A Tox versus, I think that was Laser. What was that USA? I think Laser. Is the matchup. So, there is a chance for Korra here to... Wasn't It definitely wasn't Air Force. Yeah. <laughs> Cheeky Air Force. Wow. What is... What's... I wonder what Cora's favourite army is. I'll ask him afterwards. Doesn't seem happy about the three tocks, but there we go. Okay, let us see. We are in game number five. We are on Vendetta, Cora's map. He is in the south with the blue toxin. And in the north is the laser. It is Moon Knight. Well, we know what USA or laser is going to go for here. Two supplies with a, probably a box. Let's have a look what horror will go for. Arm Stealer is going up. Dozer Drop is coming in and I don't think he's rallied any terrorists here. No, he hasn't. They are a bit late. I think he's forgotten about that. And he could take quite a bit of damage here. Needs to move his workers. Does move his workers. Ooh. Oh, wow, three workers go down. And already needs to get these RPGs in position to deal with this dozer. Because this might be the set here and now. The RPG movement is a little bit late. Yeah, you can't forget your terrorists in this matchup. Terrorists were definitely late. And that's another RPG going down. And another worker going down. So that is the best possible start from Moon Knight here. Extra workers are now being constructed. And he needs to get these workers back mining. And here as well. We've got the tech veterancy again. Ooh, that is massive. Needs to get the tech veterancy. Started so strong, Korra, on Arctic uh, Lagoon. But not getting the veterancy here. Is a massive mistake, and he's going to walk right into two Humvees here. And Moon Knight is getting stronger as we um, as we are getting deeper into this set. Are we going to see the Tech Veterancy now? No, we're not. Yeah, that is that is massive. You can't in a USA GLA. Not have tech veterancy. He's loading up some RPGs here to do a little bit of pressure. But Moon Knight already pushing. Yeah, he's going for what looks like is going to be the main supply. Ah, uh, now he does have the tech veterancy. Tech RPG is unloaded. Needs to retarget to the Humvees. He's not doing that. Okay, he is now. And that's actually a very nice clear up from Moon Knight, who is now on the arms dealer as well. Cora GG's. Yeah. It was a nice set in the end. Uh, Moon Knight, I think, with the better strategy in particular on Aura Rampage. The Arctic Lagoo games were very, very close. Uh, and very entertaining, um, but just a crucial mistake in that last game there to not rally the terrorists, the tech veterancy, um, these sorts of mistakes. You will get punished at this level um, with making these mistakes. So, 
That is the uh, the quarter final done, and we have our first semi finalist. And I would just like to update brackets. So let me let's see, find the bracket. <laughs> And then I'll give uh, or a few comments on the feedback. Okay, I found the bracket. GG's, well played. Thanks for playing, guys. Yeah. We'll write you um, some feedback in Discord. Cora was good to see you play. Alrighty, let's uh, just jump into the bracket here. So that was a 4 1 for Moon Knight in the end. He will go through into the semi final stage, which will then, of course, become best of nine. Sometimes you have to keep refreshing this. So I'll, let me refresh it again. Right, try again. 4 1 and. Submit. Yep, so Moon Knight is our first semi-finalist. So he is going to be waiting the winner of Madara and Relic, which we will be broadcasting here um, at 17 GMT. So I'm looking forward to that. Relic, actually a very old player, by the way, who's had like uh, a big break. Kind of like the break I had before I came back in um, 2020. So we... Like myself, we'll call him a dinosaur, one of the old relics, no pun intended, uh, against Mr. Madara, who um, has been travelling the world. He's on a world tour, Madara, um, in his yacht, travelling around. So uh, that'll be interesting, actually, because Madara's probably not with Rust at the level he, he would want to be himself. So be interesting how that pans out. Sam versus Nike. I think Sam... Has to be one of the favourites um, for the entire thing. So, yeah, unless Nike really rolls back the years like he did against uh, Mamo, Nike, another dinosaur, of course. I think Sam's looking favourite to also make that semi final. And uh, yeah, Friday we're going to have Jazza against the winner of Antipro and Apex. And I think Antipro is a dark horse in this as well. I think he could be a potential um, finalist. So we'll uh, we'll see how it pans out. But there we go. That is uh, it from me because it's going to be, as I say, a load of sort of mini mini casts today. These are all best of sevens. Um, it becomes best of nine when uh, when we make the semi final, and the grand final will be a best of eleven. So congrats to Moon Knight for um, for making that semi final. Some nice moments throughout, and I will see you a little bit later today. Or the commentary of Relic against Madara. I'll see you there. GG's. I got you and your vibes in my mind I can't get them out No matter how hard I try I need you and your heart next to mine Yeah, I'm all about Keeping it you and I When you're here You spark chemical reactions Your aura strikes like lightning Got no words I'm just drowning in attraction Only one way
Got no 